Today we will be discussing about a very important topic and that is on modeling and simulation application in agriculture for natural resource management. Now, we have already discussed a lot of technologies, lot of principles which we actually can apply for better natural resource management at the field level. Now, modeling or simulation exercises is another set of very important tool which nowadays are extensively used for smart natural resource management. So, today I will be you know discussing about various types of model simulations exercises and many other aspects which actually help this modeling or simulation exercise for better natural resource management. I am sure that many of you must be aware about the you know capacity or the power of modeling tool for various purposes. We have used lot of models or simulation exercise for climate change, its impact studies, crop production, soil, land use, even for that matter you know some of the uh, problems associated with the various natural resource management and other aspect if you look at that role of modeling and simulations are very, very critical. Now, having said that before we start actually you know getting into details of this particular topic at the very beginning I would like to share with you that there is also a group of uh, communities who have certain amount of what I say conservation experts and uh, many other you know natural resource uh, experts some of them have little bit of doubt with with some of the outcomes of modeling or simulation exercise with due respect to those group of people we must take their also input and keep on developing further strengthening this modeling tool yes there will be certain cases or times when you, you may find that the result that you are getting out of your modeling or simulation exercise may not be the one that you are expecting. So, there could be some surprises and that is the beauty of, of this particular tool. So, with that note let us now get into the subject. Now, what actually modeling or simulation exercise when we say we mean is basically a system a kind of a you know composite system is a set of various elements which can be usefully considered with relation to the you know accomplishment of our objective or goal. For any exercises here we are talking about NRM. So, in NRM we know that many things comes right land, water, forest, biodiversity what not. So, modeling tool if you see the literature of reports in the public domain, you will find that extensively people are using for almost all of this aspect which are basically part of natural resources. Now, let us try to understand in a very simplistic manner that how this system actually look like. So, here this very simple picture graphics it shows what it does you actually put certain sets of input into the system which is suppose your model and these inputs when you put into the system there is something is happening within the system which we will discuss later and after all those happenings it also gives you some output. So, for users this is important for users what is happening inside the systems may not be that important. But for us, for you who will be actually using this powerful tool, we need to know more about the system, how actually it works. When you provide a set of input, then what is happening there? And this system will have you know a set of equations, it could have set of you know a different kind of expressions which are actually based on the field situations. So, what actually we try to do is to mimic the nature, nature happening in the natures into this. Having said that, I must say here that it is almost impossible to mimic or copy exactly what is happening in nature. So, our effort 
would be always to go as close as possible to the nature, what is happening there. And that is why this particular field is one of the you know most dynamic and progressive field. Every day something new is happening in this field. So, natural systems as we know that when you work with natural system, it is very complex. And especially when I say that you work with natural resources, then it become more difficult to work with because each one of these components of natural resources, land, water, forest, they are so interactive, so dynamic. Every moment some changes is taking place to capture that dynamics in a model system or simulate that happenings is not an easy task. So, as I said that natural systems are highly complex due to their you know nonlinearity nature and also several interrelated components are there. Suppose you are working to find out a best you know management practices for land. Now, when you work on land, you cannot work land in isolation. So, what is happening is that inside the land, water system, forest, plantation, many things, different kind of land use is taking place. So, all those things are basically impacting your calculations, your estimations for land. So, that is why that to work with natural system is not that easy because in natural system one system is interacted, interacting with other and within each system you have various physical, chemical and biological processes taking place. On top of that a very steep challenge is posed by space and time changes almost for you know from one place suppose this is your you know one area. So, from this point if you move to this point or that point you will find that the soil, the water, the organism living in each place varies significantly. So, to capture this kind of situation in a model environment becomes much more difficult. Now, so let us take one simple example to understand that how this uh, system can work. Say for water cycle, all of us during since our childhood we have been studying hydrological cycle, water cycle. So, what actually how you can actually capture even that you know phenomena. So, in water cycle basically what we see, we see the precipitation or rainfall it takes place. So, rain it comes and then it goes to ocean system river right and then from from there evaporation takes place under the sunlight that evaporation it goes evaporated molecule moisture goes up to into atmosphere then there are some processes takes place condensations and other things and then again it precipitates but in between something is happening from oceanic system it could go into you know groundwater flow also if you remember that in watershed management classes we have discussed about different kind of water flow. So, it could be horizontal flow, it could be vertical flow of water right. So, from oceanic system ground water flow can takes place and then it enters into the ground water which is means a part of earth system. So, try to see that how uh, this simplistic system with an example of water cycle we are now discussing. Now, from oceanic system through groundwater flow water can come to the earth system from earth system through evapotranspiration it can go to the atmospheric system and then again the cycle continue. Okay. But here from the atmosphere sometime what happens that the precipitation can directly come to the land to the soil. Okay. It goes of course, into the water bodies, but it can also come to the earth surface and can straight away go into the groundwater through implantation or it can go through river as a stream flow surface water can go into the ocean. So, this is the basic you know water cycle which we can actually try to put in a simplistic system and which we can call as a model right. Now, let us get into the model. So, model is nothing but a set of tools to represent the actual natural system as I said just a minute ago. So, the challenge is this that how close you can actually you know make the system or the model that can mimic your natural system. But why do we need model first of all? Why do we need it? Natural systems as we know highly complex 
and dynamic in nature. So we have very limited knowledge about you know the dynamics and the complexity of the various physical, chemical and biological process which are happening inside the soil, inside the water, interaction with forest and ambient environment. As I said that every moment changes is taking place. Also limited availability of you know data, spatiotemporal, spatial uh, data distributed you know across the region is a great limitation for us. Now it is often very difficult to go for field level data collection for an entire area suppose hundred of kilometers of river or forest system or a, suppose a, a particular land use system a huge number of or huge volume of manpower system instrument you would be requiring and that not only you know financially is, is quite difficult to arrange but also otherwise logistic wise and in such case model helps through model you can actually somehow capture those areas also where you have not or you could not go could not visit or could not carry out the field exercise because of you know various reasons. Model also help us predicting future what would happen on the basis of what was happening in the past and what is happening now you can also predict the future. Uncertainties which are involved in the process can also be you know captured. Thus to develop a management standard and guideline modeling helps a lot. So these are couple of you know important aspect where uh, modeling exercise or simulation exercise help us for better natural resources management. Now when we talk about you know a modeling system or simulation system the first thing that come in our mind is decision support system. In brief we call them DSS. Now decision support systems are a kind of a interactive you know computer based support system which help us to you know make decision on the basis of past data, past observations and models help us to solve sometimes even the unstructured problem. So basically decision support system it is a modeling tool which help us to take certain decisions for certain area where for some reasons or other you could not able to go physically. But when you come out with this kind of decision definitely you need to carry out a very very sound and robust modeling exercise. And that robustness of a model which can actually help you to take a decision for an area where you could not able to even visit depends on the quality of data, the past data of an area on the basis of what you are developing the model or, or validating it. So developing model and validation model these are critically important exercise and that depend the quality of that depends on the quality and quantity of your data. Now what are the different way that we can actually use this kind of models already some idea you have got. We to find the response of a system for different management practices is one use of model as I said it helps in predicting the future impacts of a suppose any actions say today you have decided to carry out a particular uh, practice suppose in an agriculture field or in a forest suppose you have decided to utilize a certain practice says for example take that you have decided to apply certain chemical fertilizer or suppose you have decided to utilize a particular instrument to prepare your land or manage your forestry. Now what will be the impact of this particular uh, practice on the land, on the, on the trees, plants and water that also model helps you to you know understand and also can give you a future impact if you take this decision what will happen. So that also in another aspect of modeling exercise. It also helps to study the dynamics of the system that you know couple of minutes back we were discussing I was mentioning about the complexity and dynamics of natural system. But modeling help us to study those dynamics, help us to study the system mechanism 
to it also help us to study those complex phenomena, physical, chemical, biological processes continuously occurring in any system, whether land or water or forest. Even though they are complicated, they are complex, but models help us to understand that. Modeling also help us to interpret the uncertainty associated with system parameters. Say for example, in an area people are very poor, farmers are very poor and they need to perhaps they are rice farmers say for example. Now all of us we know that rice are transplanted from seed bed to the field, main field or it can be directly also seeded. There are various other ways. But one thing is important that every practice transplantation, fertilization, even for your suppose you want to apply pesticides, whether bio pesticides or chemical, you need to know about weather parameters. So, for, for, for agriculture weather parameters are the most important aspect which actually regulate the entire production system. So, those parameters and the uncertainty associated with that also can be analyzed and to some extent an anticipatory or precautionary mechanism can be developed by using the model outputs. So, you see that modeling exercise can actually allow us to have some adjustment in our existing system. It allow us also to you know prepare ourselves for the unseen because it helps on the basis of the past history, past record to predict the future. Yes, I do agree that there will be chances in some cases perhaps your modeling outcome or prediction does not match exactly what is happening. But even it is close suppose say 70 to 80 percent to the reality, still it is helpful because you are getting some, some kind of you know early warning before you lose everything. Now, let us discuss about little bit about the structure, how, how actually this kind of model looks like. So, model can be of different you know types and different nature. To simplify it, we can have material models where actually you have models working you know physical aspect or you can have analog models. On the other side, you have mathematical models. Now, mathematical model can be empirical or theoretical. I am just trying to give all of you a very simplistic manner to explain. So, that because I understand that many of you may not be from, from uh, you know modeling or simulation background or have experience on that. So, that is what I am trying to explain you as simple manner as possible. Now, these two sets mathematical model and material model, they have different purposes. So, on the basis of your purpose, our purposes, we decide which model to choose. Now, as you see here for analog models, we have resistivity model, electric analog models, we have viscous models, each one of them have different different use. Similar way when you come to the mathematical side, mathematical models, we have empirical models, many of you might be using and we have theoretical models. In empirical models, largely you know black box models we say artificial neural network, fuzzy logic, regression, simple regression model. So, remember that we come up with r square value something like this and then we say that it is significant even that also a, a model, a mathematical model, regression model. So, theoretical model can have again two different types deterministic model and stochastic model. Now, deterministic model again can have two conceptual and physically based. In conceptual, you can have kind of lumped or gray box type of model. In physically based, you call it white box type of model. Now, stochastic model and then conceptual and physically based model all can when come here in one place, we call it hybrid model. Certainly, you can easily understand that this will be much more what you call complex, but this kind of hybrid model will definitely allow you to capture many things at a time. Okay? So, this is how you know a kind of a model, the world, the world of model you know looks like which generally uh, used for uh, natural resource management aspect. Now, let us uh, uh, spend some time on mathematical model aspect. Mathematical model basically it is a set of 
mathematical expressions and logical statements which are combined together to simulate a natural system. I repeat it again, mathematical model is a set of mathematical expression, various mathematical expressions and also logical statements. These together they try to simulate a natural system. Now there are, you might have heard that many, many scientists they argue that any kind of phenomena happening in our life can be mathematically expressed. Well, let us not go into that debate whether all of them can be possible, but majority of the phenomena are possible to be expressed mathematically. And when you club the logical statements along with the mathematical expression, then you actually reach very near or close to the natural system or happenings. This is what is the objective or target of mathematical models. Now, simulations, simulations actually is to use these mathematical model or expressions and analyze the system by studying their properties. Suppose you are going to study one natural resource say for water. Now you want to suppose in an area you want to a pond system is there and you want to actually model it that how that pond system actually is working under cert certain sets of climatic conditions if this changes then how the dynamics in the pond will affect. You want to study that. You want to you know predict that what would happen if any changes takes place in one or many of the parameters. So, in that kind of condition situation you simulate it with the help of mathematical models and you try to study the system properties of, of that particular pond various aspects there will be temperature issue, there will be you know rainfall issue, there will be various other things. So, that is how actually you begin and you try to simulate one natural particular system and then you come out that if I change A then what will happen, if I change B then what will happen. So, this is the way it allows you, it gives lot of opportunity for you to prepare yourself to the unseen, something, some kind of changes that you have not seen, but you are prepared. So, that is a very, very uh, helpful inputs that modeling exercise can give to us in case of natural resource management. Now, coming back to this mathematical models. So, simulation is one exercise that we do in mathematical model and the other is optimization, very, very important. Now, in case of mathematical models, as I said that we have empirical, analytical, numerical and hybrid combination of all. Okay? So, largely many of you might have used numerical model quite frequently in your professional life, but the other model are equally also helpful. Now, if you come to the optimization side of mathematical models, it can be done in two way. One is unconstrained approach, the other is constraint approach. Then optimization algorithms, this is also another aspect of mathematical model where we try to optimize the situation, optimize the conditions through various optimizing algorithms. Again, they could be of two types, one is gradient based and the other is non traditional. Now, in case of gradient uh, based you have you know Gauss's Newton, Leibniz, Marquardt and then in non traditional optimization of algorithms you have genetic algorithm, particle swarm optimization, you have simulatic annealing, various techniques. So, this is again a very, very simple way or simple representation of a very complex tool or uh, phenomena which is involved in case of mathematical modeling. Mm -hmm.